Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and today I want to show you a new terrain project I just finished. And before we get going, I'm sorry, but as you can probably tell, I have been uh, blessed by Nurgle. Um, not, not with the, the plague, not with the corona, the covid, uh, just with an ordinary cold. But you can probably still tell from my voice and I'm sorry. So uh, anyway, I, I've had a couple of days where I'd, I, just, uh, I just didn't feel like painting um any models at all i don't know why just you know sometimes that happens i guess but i still wanted to do stuff for the hobby so uh, i came up with the idea of building a terrain project and then um, i thought why not build a, a, a an arcane shrine so uh, so this is the project i built so it's uh, like a, a sort of flat structure here and then on top you have like this blue skull see-through skull and then I put some light underneath it um, to make it glow. So uh, if I uh, shut off all the lights, it'll glow in the dark, which I think is, uh, I mean, I like all sorts of gadgets. So I think this is cool. So uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how I built this. So I start working on the skull plate first. I've done a rough sketch of what the skull should look like. And then I'm just painting it again using a Sharpie on a clear piece of plastic. And uh, I'm just doing this relatively roughly because I know that with the method I'm going to be using, I won't be able to get as many fine details as I might want. Um, but I still think it'll look okay in the end. So then I take some milliput, uh, like this two-part epoxy thing, and I'm going to use that to sort of make the frame for the, um, for the picture. I want it to end up looking like a stained glass window or something, so this is supposed to be like the lid. Milliput has a relatively long uh, working time, so right now I'm just trying to get at the basics and then I think I can, uh, I can work on it a bit more afterwards and get it to look a little bit more uh, elegant. And it, I have let it dry for about half an hour or so, just to make sure that it has settled a little bit before I start working on it. Otherwise, it's just really, really flexible and, and hard to do stuff with. And I'm using a little bit of water to smooth out some of the edges. Um, if you have seen some of my earlier videos on how I make stained glass windows, you'd know that I often would make a frame like this using a a laser cutter, so I would get an acrylic frame. And that, of course, is a much more... Um, a much more it gives a much more refined result in the end but due to covid and lockdown i don't have access to the place where i can borrow a laser cutter and i also thought it would be fun trying to do this just by hand to see how that would end up looking because i know a lot of people of course don't have access to a laser cutter i'm just really really lucky that there's a maker space in my area where you can borrow one for free then i flip it over and then i just uh, wash away the uh, the sharpie from the clear plastic otherwise it would be uh, i think it would be visible on the finished project and i don't want that now that the frame is completely dry i painted using just completely ordinary black acrylic paint as i said i wanted it to look like lead on a stained glass window so perhaps i should have painted it in like a dull metallic color but i'm afraid that it will you know grab too much of your attention so i just painted black then i start filling in the um, pieces of, of glass and I use a mixture of mud podge and um, contrast paints. If you want to see exactly how they're made you can go back to an earlier video I made about you about um, doing a stained glass window. I'll link to that in the description below. As this uh, in my mind was uh, always an arcane shrine I decided to go for a blue skull. I don't know why really it just uh, sa sounded uh, fun and mysterious to me. So um, yeah, that was the choice behind it. I could have made it all sorts of other colors. I just thought a blue skull would be fun. And then I decided to go for a green background with two different uh, green colors, just because I thought they would look uh, nice uh, with the blue. And also because I'm, uh, I was planning on painting the brickwork itself uh, gray, and I thought that blue and green would look nice against that as well. Very easy to see, but not perhaps too jarring uh, in, in the colors. Then I have decided that I want four sort of um, windows on the side of the building, and I wanted them to have a, a flame-like pattern on the sides, so that uh, if you're standing on the side, you can see the, this flaming sort of thing. 
and uh, I'm a little bit um, lazy, <laughs> so I didn't want to do four um, that were completely the same, just because I knew I wouldn't be happy with the end result. I would know that they weren't completely the same. So I used some uh, blue stuff, which is reusable, um, sort of a reusable mold that you can reshape once you put it in hot water. And I just put it over this um, sort of window I'd made. And uh, of course, I waited until the Miller put was dry before I did this. And once the blue uh, blue stuff had settled, it, it settles in about five minutes or so. It's a really quick process. I just uh, carefully peeled it off. And then I actually had a mold that I could use to get four identical windows. And I'd used some uh, Denzel plaster for this. I could have used Milliput as well, but the uh, Denzel plaster sets much quicker and I'm an impatient sort of person. So I thought that uh, this would be just fine. And this is what it ended up looking like. Uh, I really liked the, the way it, uh, it looked and I just needed to clean it up a little bit because I'm going to put a, a bit of clear plastic on the back of it so that I can put in more of the uh, colored mud putch. So I needed it to be relatively even so that the uh, so, so that the plastic will attach to it. Then I painted it black using the same acrylic black color as I'd used on the uh, on the LED on the bigger window. And once that was dry, I gave it just a really quick dry brush. I decided to keep it nice and simple here, so I just used um, sort of a mid-tone gray and then a lighter gray. Completely ordinary. And then I cut out this uh, piece of, uh, of plastic that I could put on the back of the window, like so. Then I took some yellow uh, tinted mud podge uh, that I wanted to use for flames. And afterwards I took a bit of red just to uh, sort of give the visual impression of the flames. It turned out that this was a little bit too light, so I ended up doing two coats, doing exactly the same thing both times. And uh, I think uh, the end result was uh, was actually pretty believable. Now we get to the building itself. This is uh, built using XPX blocks of foam. And I uh, cut it out in this uh, uh, not quite rounded shape, just to give it um, a little bit of a distinct look to it. And uh, this was just placing blocks on top of each other, so I haven't filmed the entire process because there isn't really um, much to say about that. Once I was happy with the look of the building, I gave it a coating of black paint, wall filler and PVA glue and some water. Once that was dry, I gave it a really heavy dry brush using a mid-tone grey. Um, trying to get into almost all of the nooks and crannies just without obscuring the um, separation between the rocks. Then the plan was that I would uh, more or less leave it like this and have the um, and ha have this uh, piece of glass just be loose, loosely attached, so you can just put it, take it off, and put down some sort of candle or something. But I decided that I didn't really like the look of it. It looked unfinished when seen from the top. So I decided to glue the um, the window in place and then place small black stones around the frame both to keep it in place and to make it look like it was actually meant to be like this uh, the whole time. Then I glued the smaller windows in place as well and then I also placed small stones around them uh, to give the piece a sort of coherent look and also to close any gaps that might be between the window and the building itself. Once they were all in place and dry, I gave them uh, some paint just using a relatively light a gray color. I knew that I wouldn't be able to achieve exactly the same color as on the rest of the building, so I thought that I might as well just go with the flow and uh, do them in a different tone so that it would look like it had been meant to be this way all along. Uh, when you make a mistake, you might as well just go with it. I then also painted some of the in in stones individually using this lighter gray color. This is a way of painting I have learned from Black Magic Craft, where you paint some of the stones in different colors to add some more visual interest instead of just having a building that is just one tone of gray all the way through. So you can see I'm also using a darker beige and I'm using a very bright blue. Don't worry, it'll be toned down. And I'm also using a um, sort of grayish purple color as well. Then I hit it all with a black wash and this is just 
Um, this is just a homemade black wash. I don't want to spend my expensive Northern Oil on terrain projects. So this is uh, uh, some black acrylic paint and some water and a little bit of ink. Once it's dry, I give it all a nice bit of dry brushing using, I think, two different tones of gray uh, in the end. Once I was happy with that, I had to turn it on its head and then cut a hole so that I could put in the light source from below. Once that was done, I took some PVA glue and uh, put it on the edge of some of the stones so that I could put a little bit of grass texture on to uh, make it look like moss or something. I, um, I suppose this is a really old arcane shrine that's been standing outside for a very long time. And this is what it looks like with some light in both with the lights on and off. And um, I mean, I think this was, this, it looks fun, I think. And uh, here you can see it with a, uh, a demonette on top just to uh, give you an idea of the size of it. I must say this was uh, this was a fun project. It was a nice change of pace and I enjoyed building it. It's not something that I was for uh, you know any particular project or any particular game. I didn't have a deadline. This was just pure fun just just for the just for the sake of it and sometimes I just think that's nice. I can have a tendency to set a lot of uh, deadlines for myself and apply some totally unwarranted uh, pressure on my ability to finish an army or paint models at a certain time and uh, it's completely my own doing and I don't know why I do it. I'm That's probably just the type of person I am. Um, so doing something that's just purely for the sake of being creative and having fun, that is just really important and something that I enjoy and particularly something that's important right now with the whole lockdown situation going on. Um, I can feel that I'm a little bit demotivated working on my armies because who knows when I will be able to go out and play with them. So doing something just for fun uh, was just uh, really, really nice. So I hope you liked this video. If you, if you did, um, please remember to leave a like and uh, subscribing to my channel if you want to. You're also, of course, more than welcome to leave a comment. You can also follow me on other social media such as Twitter and Instagram, and also as Dyson Demons. So thank you so much for watching this one, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.